Lesson on electromagnetism. Electricity review. Recall that current is the flow of electrons due to a voltage difference, that is, from a high voltage to a low voltage. And that's according to Ohm's law. Here we see a light bulb or resistor attached to a battery that supplies our voltage difference. Here current flows from this high voltage around our circuit down to a lower voltage. Electromagnetism part one. In class, we introduced the compass. And a compass is used to detect magnetism. It's really just a magnet that's free to float and rotate. And it lines itself up with the nearest, strongest magnetic field. Here you used it to line up the wire in the direction of the compass needle. We then attached the battery. We observed what happened when we got current to flow through our circuit. Let's take a look at what happens. Here we can see that as we connect the battery and complete the circuit, as current flows, we see the compass needle deflect. We see that deflection here to be counterclockwise. And that is when the current's flowing from high voltage to low voltage in this direction. Since the compass detects magnetic fields, what magnetic field is it lining up with right now? Well, as current flows, it produces its own magnetic field, and that is detected by the compass. Here we can observe that electricity produces magnetism. Now what happens when we switch these wires and have current flow from a high voltage here to a low voltage here? That is, the direction of current flow will be in this direction. Well, let's observe. Here we can see in slow motion that now, as the current reverses direction, the compass now rotates clockwise. So we can see that as the current changes direction, so does the magnetic field, and our compass aligns itself up with the new magnetic field, which is in a different direction. Here we observe that electricity can produce magnetism, but can magnetism produce electricity? Electromagnetism part two. In class, we utilize the galvanometer, which is used to measure very small amounts of current. That is, when the needle moves a little bit, there's a little bit of current flowing. When the needle moves a lot, there's a lot of current flowing. It also can tell us the direction of current flow. That is, the needle is free to move to the left or to the right, indicating which direction current is flowing. Let's take a look at our solenoid, which is about 500 turns of copper wire when we attach it to a galvanometer and plunge our magnet into the solenoid, north side first. Here we can see that that moving magnet creates electricity. And if you notice carefully, if the magnet is not moving, there is no current flowing, and hence no reading on the galvanometer. But if we look back here, as we go in at a high speed, you can see there's a lot of current flowing a great deflection on the galvanometer. If we go in at a much lower speed, we see that the galvanometer deflects, but not by much. In the early 1800s, this was a phenomenal discovery that magnetism produces electricity. Let's make another observation of our magnet going into the solenoid, now with the south end in first. Here you can see that the current changes direction, but in the opposite way. When we had the red end in first, it went the other way. Here was silver end in, the current flows the other way. With the silver end in out, the current flows the opposite direction. In class, you observe that the amount of current produced depends on the speed of the magnet. The faster the magnet moving, the more current. You also observe that the direction of current flow depends on the pole of the magnet. Whether you put in the north end in first or the south end in first will affect the direction of current flow. This phenomenon is called electromagnetic induction and was discovered in 1831 by Michael Faraday in England and Joseph Henry in the United States. They both discovered that a voltage difference produced across a conductor is due to a varying magnetic field or change in magnetic flux. Otherwise, when the current flowed in the solenoid, it was due to a voltage difference. That voltage difference was produced by the moving magnet. 
but what is magnetic flux? Before we can talk about magnetic flux, we need to understand what magnetic field lines are. Here is our image of a bar magnet with the red end as north and blue as south. Magnetic field lines run from the north end of a magnet around and dive into the south end of the magnet. And they, there is an infinite amount of these magnetic field lines going from north to south. You can observe that there's a higher density of magnetic field lines here near the poles as opposed to further out. This is important when understanding the concept of magnetic flux. Magnetic flux. This is the number of magnetic field lines intercepted in a given area. The symbol for magnetic flux is this funky phi symbol, and that equals the magnetic field strength times the area. It's easy to understand when we look at the side view here. Here we have a circle that's intercepting a lot of magnetic field lines. In fact, if we take a top-down aerial view, you can see it intercepts one, two, three, four, ooh, maybe five magnetic field lines. However, if we rotate that circle, as shown here, you can see it does not intercept as many magnetic field lines. Here's the top-down aerial view. We can see that it only intercepts two magnetic field lines. That is, we would have a larger flux here with a bigger area as opposed to a smaller flux with a smaller area. But it is not simply magnetic flux that creates current. It is a changing magnetic flux. That is, I need my area intercepted. Here is a large area and many magnetic field lines going through that. And when I tilt it, I reduce the area and thus, and thus decrease the number of field lines through that area. Now I increase the area and then decrease the area. So I keep changing the magnetic flux. This changing magnetic flux over time will create or induce a voltage in the coil. That induced voltage will then cause current to flow. So why then does the galvanometer read a current flow due to the magnet going in and out of the coil? Well, let's take a look at this coil right here in this permanent bar magnet. Right now, there's no magnetic flux inside the coil, but as we insert the magnet into the coil, you can see that the magnetic flux is going to increase. This coil will start intercepting more and more of these magnetic field lines. And also, once we remove the magnet, it'll start intercepting fewer and fewer magnetic field lines. However the magnetic flux changes, whether it increases or decreases, that will result in an induced voltage, which will produce current. Just as we changed the area intercepted through this coil with these magnetic field lines did. Thank you for watching, and see you in class.